What will China want to talk about during Vladimir Putin's state visit? Russian President Vladimir Putin's trip to China is part of the great power politics currently being played out between the West and the Global South. In this arena, China's President Xi Jinping is promoting his multipolar view of the world, a realignment of the world's geopolitical center away from the US and Europe, to Asia. She sees China front and center on the stage, with a coterie of countries to back him up. China, Russia, Iran and North Korea are at one end of the spectrum, but widen out the view and there is also Brazil, India and South Africa, who all see the world through a lens at odds with the West. Added to that is the so-called no limits of friendship between Russia and China. It has been tested to the limit as Russia continues its war in Ukraine. But there is no sign China has any plan to abandon its neighbor. So what will China want to talk about? First, the Russia-Ukraine war. China is under growing pressure from the US and Europe to rein in exports of dual-use items like semiconductors and machinery tools that Russia can use on the battlefield. But if China is feeling the heat, you wouldn't know it. Its exports to Russia surged last year. The way Xi Jinping sees it, Russia is another market for China's export-driven economy, and with Western companies banned from doing business with Russia, China has stepped in to take advantage of it. China is also resisting pressure from the West to use its leverage to force Mr. Putin to wind down the war. While President Xi doesn't want to see Russia in the grip of collapse, after all they share a 2,500-mile-long border, a long, grinding war in Ukraine has benefits for China. It drains European energy and resources, distracts the US and allows China to get on with its territorial claims in Asia and its ambition to dominate international trade in EVs, solar panels and batteries. In this Sino-Russian relationship, China has the upper hand. It's receiving cheap raw materials from Russia and paying 30% less for natural gas than Europe did before the war. China is calling the shots. While Mr. Putin and Mr. Xi have an enduring friendship, this alignment is a thorn in the side for the West. But there seems little Europe and the US can do about it. Threats aren't working, sanctioning Chinese banks might. For Beijing, it's all about balance. China needs the US and Europe to remain open to its exports. So far, it has been able to have it all. However, it's becoming increasingly untenable for the West to stand by while China stands with Russia. A time may yet come when President Xi Jinping is forced to make a choice. Rust Weapons Supervisor Appeals Against Fatal Film Set Shooting Conviction The weapons supervisor for the Western film Rust is appealing against her conviction for involuntary manslaughter over the fatal shooting of a cinematographer on set, according to court documents. Hannah Gutierrez was jailed in April after being found guilty by jurors following a trial in Santa Fe, New Mexico, in the U.S. She was in charge of weapons during the production of the film in October 2021, when a Colt 45 revolver fired by actor and co-producer Alec Baldwin went off during a rehearsal. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins died, while director Joel Sousa was injured. A defense lawyer for Gutierrez, who is serving an 18-month sentence at a prison for women in New Mexico, filed a shortly worded appeal notice on Monday. Her legal team has 30 days to submit detailed arguments. They previously requested a new trial following the verdict. Gutierrez's trial was told she unwittingly brought live ammunition to the set, where it was expressly prohibited, and failed to follow basic gun safety protocols. During her sentencing hearing, she told the court she had tried to do her best while working on the production, despite not having proper time, resources, and staffing. Baldwin, who was a producer for the film as well as its star, has also pleaded not guilty to a charge of involuntary manslaughter. He maintains he pulled back the gun's hammer, but not the trigger, before it fired, and is set to face trial in July. He denies any wrongdoing. The 66-year-old was originally charged in January 2023, more than a year after the shooting, but those charges were dropped a few months later. He was charged again in January this year. His legal team has filed a motion calling for the charges to be dropped. Prosecutors responded with a 32-page document claiming that footage of the star on set shows he had absolutely no control of his own emotions and no concern for how his conduct affected those around him. 
Assistant Director David Halls, who also faced charges, entered a plea bargain for negligent use of a deadly weapon last year, receiving a six-month suspended sentence. Filming of Rust resumed last year in Montana, with Baldwin reprising his role as the main character, after an agreement made Ms. Hutchins's widower and executive producer. Man who scooped $1.35 billion lottery win embroiled in legal battle with his own family. A man who scooped a $1.35 billion lottery win is said to be embroiled in a legal battle with his own family. The Mega Millions winner, who has not been named but is believed to hail from the U.S. state of Maine, won the fourth largest jackpot in U.S. history last year. But the story has only grown more complex since then, and the man is now involved in legal proceedings with two members of his family, U.S. media outlet The Daily Beast reports. He is said to have sued his daughter's mother for allegedly revealing his newfound wealth to other members of his family in what he claimed was a violation of a non-disclosure agreement. The lottery winner has also reportedly demanded hundreds of thousands of dollars in penalties, claiming that his child's mother told his father, sister and stepmother about his big windfall. But in recent court filings, the woman alleged that the man himself told his father and stepmother about the win, the Daily Beast reported. Her lawyers said this shatters the remaining shards of the lawsuit. The unnamed lottery winner's father has also now apparently become involved in the legal proceedings, alleging that his son misled him about a number of things since the win. I understand that my son has stated that he told me nothing about his money, other than the simple fact that I had one. That is not true, he is quoted as saying in a declaration. His dad adds that his son told me a number of things he planned on doing with his money, even though he never asked him for anything, the Daily Beast also reported. These allegedly included building a new garage for his father as well as buying old cars to fix up. Unbelievably insulting, Bumble apologizes for billboard ad campaign. Bumble has apologized after it appeared to make fun of celibate women in a new advertising campaign. The dating app ran a billboard campaign with slogans including, you know full well a vow of celibacy is not the answer, and, thou shall not give up dating and become a nun. Social media users called the campaign unbelievably insulting, patronizing, and a tone deaf. The company has now apologized and admitted, we made a mistake. It added, our ads referencing celibacy were an attempt to lean into a community frustrated by modern dating and instead of bringing joy and humor, we unintentionally did the opposite. Many people criticized the adverts, which appeared in the US, for misunderstanding why women choose celibacy. Some said celibacy is a response to trauma, while for others, it is a choice not to settle. Asexual people may choose to be celibate and still date, and for some, it is a religious choice. Increasingly, celibacy is also used as a protest against patriarchal societies, with South Korea's Furby movement attracting global attention as women began to cut men out of their lives. Furby is shorthand for four Korean words that all start with by him meaning no, according to journalist Anna Louise Sussman, who covered the movement last year for The Cut magazine. As well as the public apology, Bumble said it will be donating to the National Domestic Violence Hotline and other organizations that support women. Billboard spaces will also be offered to the organizations to display and add of their choice for the remaining time period that Bumble reserved them for. In a statement, the company said it has passionately stood up for women and marginalized communities and their right to fully exercise personal choice for years. The dating app company is going through a rough patch. Its shares have fallen steadily since last July, dropping roughly 45% over that time amid concerns over its ability to reach younger users. In February, it laid off 350 employees, roughly 30% of its workforce, when it announced plans to revamp its app in order to make it more attractive to Generation Z. The latest ad campaign was designed to launch the revamped app. <laughs> OpenAI to begin rollout of most advanced ever ChatGPT. The new version of the ChatGPT AI chatbot has been unveiled and offers near-instant results across text, vision and audio, according to its maker. 
OpenAI said it was much better at understanding visuals and sounds than previous versions. It offers the prospect of real-time conversations with the chatbot, including the ability to interrupt its answers. The firm says it accepts as input any combination of text, audio, and image and generates any combination of text, audio, and image outputs. GPT-40 is to be rolled out over the next few weeks amid a battle by tech firms to develop ever more advanced artificial intelligence tools. Monday's announcement showed tasks such as real-time language translation and using its vision capability to guide a blind person around London. GPT-40 can respond to audio in as little as 232 milliseconds, with an average of 320 milliseconds, which the company says is similar to human response time. To try to ease concerns over bias, fairness and misinformation, the Microsoft-backed company says the new version has undergone extensive testing by 70 external experts. It comes after Google earlier this year had a major PR blunder over images generated by its Gemini AI system. GPT-40 model will be free, but Premium Plus users get a greater capacity limit for messages. Previous versions of the chatbot have caused unease in schools and universities due to some students using it to cheat by producing convincing essays. When it launched two years ago, ChatGPT was said to be the fastest ever app to reach 100 million active monthly users. The announcement also stole a march on Google, which is expected to tomorrow show off its own new AI features at its annual developers conference. Super fluffy, candy floss planet bigger than Jupiter discovered by astronomers, Faxa Post. Astronomers have identified a planet as light and fluffy as candy floss, despite being far bigger than our solar system's gas giant Jupiter. Scientists said WASP-193b is basically super fluffy because it has remarkably low density for its size. It's thought to consist mostly of hydrogen and helium, according to a study published in Nature Astronomy. WASP-193b is the second least dense planet discovered by astronomers, but is proving a mystery to experts due to its size, which is around 50% bigger than Jupiter. The planet is basically super fluffy because it's made mostly of light gases rather than solids, according to lead author Khalid Barkawi of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT. More observational work will need to be carried out before astronomers can answer all the questions posed by its fluffy existence. Scientists said WASP-193b, which some experts believe is so light it could float on water, is ideal for studying the formation and evolution of planets. The existence of the exoplanet, those beyond our solar system, was confirmed last year, but it took extra time and work to determine its consistency based on observations from ground telescopes. The planet is located outside of our solar system some 1,200 light-years away, one light-year is equal to 5.8 trillion miles, and orbits a star which is similar to the Sun. It is thought the heat from its nearby Sun, which it orbits a little over every six days, could be making its atmosphere inflate. The fluffy planet's emergence comes days after researchers revealed there is a super-Earth located in our Milky Way galaxy. The rocky world, called 55 Cancri E or Janssen, is situated around 41 light-years from Earth and has a diameter of around twice that of our planet. Renyu Hu, of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the lead author of the study published in the journal Nature, said, the atmosphere is likely rich in carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide, but can also have other gases such as water vapor and sulfur dioxide. The current observations cannot pinpoint the exact atmospheric composition. This planet cannot be habitable because it is too hot to have liquid water. <laughs>